Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. My dad, Boris Nemco, a Holocaust survivor, was a factory worker in New York City until he saved up enough money for a very modest storefront in a tough neighborhood, 105 Moore Street, Brooklyn. It wasn't exactly the ideal location for a clothing store. Next door was a deli specializing in chicharrones, and the smell of the stale burnt oil merged with the smell from the store on the other side, that is, blood from the live chicken market. And my dad's store was so small that most of the merchandise had to be displayed in front of the store on folding tables and hung from the awning. As I said, it was a tough neighborhood, and so on the weekends when school was out, kids would race by my father's store, grab boxes of shirts, sunglasses, whatever. My dad was proud that although his native language was Polish and that he had recently come to the U.S. as an adult speaking no English, he learned not only functional English but Spanish so he could converse with his customers. Rain, snow, or shine, six days a week, taking off only for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, my dad would get up at six in the morning, trudge to the bus stop, wait outside, there were no shelters back then, for the bus that would take him to the train, that would take him to the Lorimer Street subway stop, where he would then walk the six blocks to the store, again, rain or shine, or snow, as so often is the case in New York. As with U.S. mail service, customers knew they could get their shirts, their underwear, whatever. My dad would keep the store open until dark, with no break for lunch. He would typically get a quarter pound of cheese and a torta, which is much less expensive than buying a sandwich, plus a mango from the bodega across the street, and he would chomp it in between customers. Then before closing, he'd schlep all the merchandise back into the store, reverse his trek home, eat, and then collapse to do it all again the next day. What my father was proudest of was his merchandise and how he kept the price down. His costs were kept down by the modest store in that most modest neighborhood with no fancy decor. Plus, he did almost all the work himself. The only help he got was a salesperson on Saturdays to avoid customers having to wait. And to save on shipping costs, on Sunday, he, my mom, my sister, and I would take the subway, or at least until he could afford a beater car, to the Lower East Side to buy merchandise and have a potato soup and Blintz's lunch at Ratner's on Delancey Street. Anyway, that would not only save the shipping costs, my dad could negotiate with each of the tiny wholesalers, and he passed the savings on to the customers. For example, Fruit of the Loom t-shirts, a buck. Hanes, buck and a quarter. Button-down shirts, a buck for a basic one, $1.98 for the quality ones. Italian suits, $25. Most surprising, Ray-Ban sunglasses, $1.98. Yeah, it was back in the 60s, but still. My dad had many regular customers, but he also had regular arsonists. Three times in the middle of the night, we were awakened by a call from the police that someone had dropped gasoline-soaked rags from the roof down the chimney of my father's store, and each time, everything was destroyed. He rebuilt each time. My dad's store was the only one on the block owned by a Jew, and the only one that had been arsoned even once. Were they angry at a Jew making even a modest living, providing for their community, one a community that was so different from his own? providing them good products at too cheap prices at incredible effort. My dad ran the store for 50 years, never making more than a middle, middle-class living. Of course, he wasn't happy doing all of that, but it was pretty much all that life gave him. Arriving in the U.S. at 30, a stranger with no money, no English, no education, no family, only the scars of the Holocaust tortures, factory work, and then a minimal business from which he could squeeze out a bare middle-class living was, he felt, a reasonable choice. I didn't notice it back then, but now it is hard for me to believe that he never, I mean never, complained. Nor did he ever argue when my mom refused to work outside the home, even to help my dad on busy Saturdays. When he finally retired at 82, he kept one foot in front of the other. He cartooned, he drove his aged peers to doctor's appointments, polished his beloved, his beloved Dodge Dart, and he grew tomatoes and gave them to all his neighbors. Six weeks before he died at 86, he was planting the dozen tomato plants for the next season. I can envision some readers thinking that Boris Nemko is one of a kind, or that he's not of today's era, or that he didn't care about work-life balance, or that he needed to be more ambitious. But I, for one, consider my dad's attributes among the most admirable, those to which we should all aspire. Responsibility way ahead of pleasure. Doing whatever it takes to make a living. No excuses. No complaining. And finally, no matter how bad your past, stop looking back and take the next step forward. 
In any event, I thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments, and I especially like you to hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.